But we do want to begin with the House's early morning passage of the COVID relief bill and what will exactly come next. Uh, joining me now, Democratic Congressman Lloyd Doggett of Texas. He is a member of both the Budget Committee and Ways and Means Committee. Congressman Doggett, thanks for joining us on this. Really appreciate it. I first just kind of want to get your overall reaction to the passing of the relief bill in the House. Well, it's really encouraging. You know, I've had uh, so many people call uh, my office in Texas this past week asking when will relief be on the way because they're really in a desperate circumstance of being uh, losing a roof over their heads, uh, not having enough to eat, of course, because of our unfortunate recent uh, weather crisis, uh, not having uh, enough water in some cases. They need help now. Uh, I wanted a bipartisan bill. Uh, and it is a bipartisan result because we don't uh, discriminate between red states and blue states. Everyone out there across America demanding action. I wish we could have had uh, Republicans join us, uh, but uh, we learned last year that waiting on Republicans to develop some compassion for these folks is uh, a wait that never seems to end. So I'm pleased we get some real action now. What do you say to the two Democrats? Um, that voted against it, criticizing uh, the non-COVID related spending and going on to say the minimum wage hike uh, could actually cripple small businesses? Well, uh, I don't uh, agree with them. Uh, I don't also don't agree with every provision in the bill, but I think overall it's a good, responsible, responsive action, action package to get relief now. Uh, I, uh, I think that it's important uh, to raise the minimum wage. It's really a poverty wage. And uh, we haven't raised it in over a decade. Its purchasing power now in, in 2009 terms is only $5.85 per hour. That is a wage that people cannot survive on. Uh, we were phasing it in to not do $15 immediately, but over time. Uh, I think it was a good way to proceed. I hope the Senate can find some way uh, to get this approved despite the ruling of the parliamentarian. Is there a way around, is there a workaround to get this uh, minimum wage hike, minimum wage hike, excuse me, um, through? Because it seems as if in the Senate it's actually not going to be able to happen. So, so is there a backup plan that Democrats have in place, whether it be yet another bill, another COVID relief bill, a standalone bill for a minimum wage hike? What's the backup plan? Well, well, we do need a plan B. I think the ultimate plan B is for voters to bounce some of these Republicans who are as unresponsive as they were last year at the polls. But to get immediate relief, several things are being explored. The possibility of using the tax code, that's a little convoluted. The possibility of applying it only to larger corporations. Uh, it could be phased in and, and approve the phase in without perhaps the ultimate $15 yet. I believe there is room for responsible people to come together. It's just that Republicans seem to take in the House the attitude that they did not want to reach a compromise, didn't want to reach agreement, and would rather have the dispute than a good result for relief now. Um, I, I do want to turn um, to what happened in your state um, just yes. a couple of days ago, really, at this point. Um, with the power outage and the major storm that hit your state. Um, the, the ERCOT CEO said that they did all that they could. Uh, but now sem seven members of the ERCOT board have resigned. What do you make of it, especially given your own personal experience in having lost power during that time? Yes, we were, we were without power for almost a week uh, and uh, certainly not suffering the way so many of our neighbors did, uh, also with the loss of water. But this was a totally unnecessary crisis, and it's not all ERCOT. Uh, what we need is not just the out-of-state resignations that occurred, but some in-state responsibility. Uh, and Governor Greg Abbott uh, did not prepare, did not get his appointees to prepare. Uh, and as a result, uh, we had some deaths, and we had a considerable amount of human suffering. He, his fossil fuel friends may be happy they were able to cut corners on safety and weatherization, but all of us paid a big price. You remember that, that it was President uh, Trump who declared that windmills cause cancer, and then we had Governor Abbott declare that they caused the uh, power outage. All of this is really just a big lie. There's no substitute for providing effective governance. 
And of course, amidst all this, your colleague, Senator Ted Cruz, heading to Cancun, Mexico, as so many Texans across the state were without power, freezing temperatures. Children had lost their lives at that point. Um, I do want to play a joke this, that, that the senator um, had to say at CPAC recently. I got to say, Orlando is awesome. It's not as nice as Cancun. But it's nice. Congressman, well, your reaction? I think yeah, I think his sense of humor is about as good as his commitment to solve the problems that working families in Texas have. Uh, I, uh, I understand the focus on Senator Cruz because he left the scene of the battle when it was occurring, much as my Republican Party chair in Austin proposed to do to fly to Florida in the, in, in the midst of this. But my real concern is not what he did during the crisis, but what our state administration, particularly Governor Abbott, failed to do to prepare for and avoid this crisis, which should have been done. We have plenty of states north of Texas that did just fine. El Paso did just fine because it was connected to a different grid. What happened was a failure to prepare and prevent danger. And of course, the same kind of failure to recognize, as President Trump denied, that the climate crisis is impacting states like Texas very hard, whether it's a hurricane, a tornado, a drought, a flood, or in this case, the weakening of the jet stream, which appears to have let in a, a flood of, of harsh Arctic air. We need to prepare for the climate crisis instead of having state leaders in Texas continue to object to meaningful and reasonable solutions to the climate crisis. Congressman Doggett, thank you.